Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Chad and I are just getting online and we'll be getting started in a few minutes. Just give a few more minutes in case anyone wants to join us and they're running a few minutes late. In the meantime, if you have any questions we can answer for you, please feel free to type them in the chat box. Or if you don't have access to the chat box, you can text me at 845-641-3063. We'll get started in just a few minutes. All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for joining our webinar today on competitive mindset and nutrition for soccer. My name is Dan Wernikoff and I'm the founder of Champion Athletes. We're a sports nutritionist group that focuses on primarily um, youth, adolescent and college level athletes, eight to 25 years old. And our goal is to help them perform better through better nutrition in their given sport. Joining us today from Wrestling Mindset, and uh, sports mindset is Chad Parks. Hey, how's it going? Um, good to be on here. Dan, thanks for having me on. So uh, I'm a, a high school wrestling coach. I'm a mindset coach that works with pretty much every sport out there. Uh, my children play soccer, so I've been around soccer quite a bit. Anyway, I'm excited to be able to share some mindset information with you guys today. Great. As we're working through the webinar today, please feel free to ask questions. You can type them in the chat box, or if you don't have access to the chat box, feel free to text them to me at 845-641-3063, uh, and Chad and I are happy to answer questions. The more interactive our presentation is today, I think the more everyone gets out of it. So we're going to start off today with Mindset, and Coach Parks will do our first segment. All right, so we'll run through some slides here and then discuss those. Again, if you have any questions, put them in the chat box and then we'll address those. But uh, very first thing, you know, whenever I talk to athletes or I'm talking to large groups, I often ask them, I say, how much of your sport is mental? And almost 100 percent of the time, people say 90 percent or more. And I think most of us could agree if we've been athletes or coaches that a lot of sport is mental. Right. But here's the training paradox. Even though we know it's 90 percent or more mental very rarely do we actually train or put a true emphasis on training our mindset. So we you know, typically do 90% or more physical. And to be honest, like, I mean, early in my coaching career, 
I would say I was probably 95 percent physical. And we need the physical part, right? We need to do uh, learn our techniques, our strategies, our physical conditioning, all the things that we do at practice. And then I maybe sprinkled in some mindset training. But knowing that the sport is 90 percent mental, we need to make sure that there's a true focus on. So we don't want to have this paradox. We don't want to have this uneven. We want to make sure that we're doing the physical portion and then that we're truly addressing the mindset or the mental side as well. All right, these are what we call red flags. And if you have experienced this as an athlete or as a coach, senior teams experience this, uh, these are mental things that we think are red flags. Okay, we know are red flags. So the first one, get nervous in front of the goal. All right, you get somebody that's up there and all of a sudden they panic a little bit. All right, difficulty bouncing back from mistakes. You know, you have to have a really short memory in a sport like soccer. And if you make a mistake, we don't want that one to turn into two. And so a lot of times people will make a mistake. Now they're fearful of making another one. Therefore, it becomes a negative cycle and they can't open up and just truly play. Uh, afraid of getting beat one on one, worried about letting their teammates or their coaches or other people down. All right. Uh, afraid to take PKs and then just not being aggressive. Those are all real issues. And a lot of times we know these athletes have the physical abilities or maybe you are the athlete and you know that you have physical ability. But for some reason, you just can't pull the trigger whenever you're out there. You can't fully um, compete in a real game, maybe the way that you do in practice. Okay, so what is mindset training? This is a sport-specific and systematic program. All right, again, it's not just kind of sprinkling some, some motivational things in here and there. Okay, for us, we consider it like strength training for your mind. And we literally have a curriculum that we take our athletes through. So if I'm working with the team, we have sessions that we go through. We have a curriculum. We have paperwork. It's interactive going back and forth. And then the same thing when I'm working with the individuals. Now, a lot of the individuals I work with around the nation do one-on-one -on -one training with them. And, you know, they have a curriculum. I tell them what worksheets we're on. And then, again, it's interactive the whole time. So they're literally writing things down. They have daily activities and they have weekly activities that they're doing. And we want it to be performance driven. I'm um, not just talking about outcomes. Winning is fun. We all like to win. I don't like to lose. But at the same time, it is not everything. All right. You can sometimes win, but you know that you didn't perform well. Other times, maybe you lose, but you know that you performed really well that day. OK, we want to always have our best performance to put ourselves in position to win. All right. So what mindset training is not, it's not just motivational speaking. It's not therapy. And it's not counseling. All right. These are really sport specific things that we're going to do. And, uh, and again, they're systematic. Okay. So I said a minute ago, you know, in the last slide, it's like strength training. And that's one of my specialties is strength conditioning, strength training. Uh, it's a real passion. And these days, most athletes strength train year round. You do strength training, conditioning year round. And, you know, you have different periods and ways that you program it throughout the year, depending on if you're in the off season or in season, things like that. But it's done all the time. We know that athletes can't be too fast, too strong, have too good a technique. Your mindset training needs to be the same way. This is something that can be done in season, something that can be done out of season. The things that we're doing in the off season or out of season build 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 so then we can perform in season so we want our strength training to be year-round we want our mindset training to be year-round okay and again it's active and then we're looking to train different mental muscles a lot of times whenever we talk about mindset people are like oh you know you want to have a you want to have some mental toughness which is great it's huge but it's just one little portion so you can see the 13 mental muscles and these are all areas that we go through with teams and athletes okay Self-knowledge, goal setting, we're talking true goal setting and systems to get to those goals, mental toughness, motivation, um, just go through a few of these or learn how to relax under pressure that's big. A lot of times people put a lot of pressure on themselves and again, they can't fully open up. And then looking at things like leadership skills, team building skills. We don't want our athletes just to be good by themselves. We want them to contribute to the team. We want them to be the best leaders possible, leaders on their team in the classroom, in their communities. So we work on leadership skills and how to build teams. And then a couple of real practical things, injury recovery. Um, injuries are just part of sport, unfortunately. And whenever we get injured, and I've been injured a number of times, I was a college athlete. It can be, uh, 
can be pretty devastating. And you really feel like, what if I fall behind? There's all kinds of questioning that goes in, you know, on in your mind. So we teach athletes how to focus on the things that they can do while they're injured, not the things they can't, and walk them through that process. And then sleep. And that's something, you know, as Dan discusses nutrition, um, sleep is huge. And it's, you know, if we're not sleeping well, if we don't have a great sleep routine, then we're not able to recover fully. Our muscles can't recover. Our mind can't recover, which means we're not going to be able to practice at the level we want to. We're not going to be able to perform at the level we want to. So we take athletes through and teach them things that they should know to develop great sleep habits. Just a few of the teams that we work with, and we work with, uh, you know, youth teams all the way through Olympic level and professional athletes. You can see some of the NCAA teams that we work with there. Iowa State, Rutgers, Michigan State, um, all divisions, you know, JUCOs through D1s, and then a number of the top high schools in the nation. Of course, we have a lot of clubs that we work with as well. And then I'll take you through here you know, a couple of just sort of mini lessons of things that we talk to the athletes about. And if you have any questions about this or if anything pops into your mind about mindset or mental training, as we're going, put it in the chat and I'll make sure that I address those things. But love this picture. OK, so we have this thing and we like to call it predator versus prey mindset. We want to have a predator mindset. We don't want to be the prey. And we can see you there. You know, you got um, predator animals. Their eyes are in front. Eyes in front like to hunt. Eyes on the side like to hide. OK, so if you are a tiger, if you're a lion, you don't wake up in the morning thinking about being eaten. You have one objective. You're sort of you're the top of the food chain, king of the jungle. And you have an objective and you're going to go after it. You're going to go after food to feed your family. OK, whereas prey, when they wake up, like they're worried about everything around them all the time. They don't want to be eaten. So for us as athletes, we want to have an objective in front of us or a goal or a desired outcome. And then understand the system that we need to do to get there and then focus on it. Eyes in front. OK, right. And we're staying on the path. And anything that takes us off the path, anything we can't control is a waste of our energy. So we want to make sure that we are keeping um, the objective right at the forefront and not being like a prey animal and getting drawn in by everything around us. You can see this picture. It's an awesome picture. Um, you know, Michael Phelps, one of the best athletes in history. He is focused on his job. He is focused on swimming his race, finishing, and his opponent has taken his eyes off of his objective and is now focusing on what Michael Phelps is doing, which means he's going to fall behind even further. So as athletes, we don't want to focus on everything else around us. And a real simple way we like to put this is prey is your greatest foe. All right. And foe is F O E the F stands for fan mentality. As an athlete, uh, we can be, I'm, I'm a huge fan of sports, right? There's a number of sports teams that I love out there, but as a competitor, I don't want to walk around in fan mentality and people that are in fan mentality are worried about rankings. They're worried about um, other people's skills and abilities. They're worried about other teams records how they did the state tournament last year, how they've done in national tournaments. You know, they're worried about all these things that are outside of their control. We can't live in a fan mentality as athletes. That is a prey mindset. All right. A predator mindset says, you know what? I can't control those things, but I can control my effort, my attitude, my aggressiveness. So that's how I'm going to run. That's what I'm going to focus on. All right. The O in FO stands for others. We can't worry about what other people think about us. We can't worry about what other people are doing. We can't be like this guy looking at Michael Phelps and worried about what he's doing and taking our eyes off the prize. So we need to make sure that other people's opinions, other people's actions, those type of things that we can't control don't consume our minds. And a lot of times for athletes, they're worried about others. And um, I want to put this in a way that you understand that Sometimes it's people that are really important in their lives as an athlete, right? And I did this as an athlete and understand this for my athletes. We care about our parents and they care about us. We care about our coaches and they care about us. We care about our teammates and they care about us. Those are others that sometimes we're really afraid to mess up or to let down. So I always have to tell my athletes, like those people are going to love you regardless, win or lose. All right. But that can still cause a lot of pressure. If you know as an athlete that, hey, if I mess up or if I think as an athlete, if I mess up, coach is going to be disappointed, not want to talk to me or coach is going to get on to me or bench me. Um, mom and dad are going to rip me on the way home in the car. You know, my teammates are going to be mad at me. Those things don't help you become a better player. 
So we can't focus on others. We have to focus on our job and getting better all the time. And then realizing those people are still going to care about us at the end of the day. And that's why they matter to us in the first place. Okay. And then the E is extras. Um, extra things are not inherently bad. And I always like to use video games as an example. I'm not even a gamer, but a lot of kids like to play video games. Cool. That's fine. But if that video game is keeping them up till 2.30 in the morning, now that extra has become a negative. That is a prey mindset. We have let something that could have just been fun, a hobby, maybe even relaxing, right? Stress relief because it takes our mind off of other things. Now we're not getting the sleep we need. We're not recovering. We're not able to train hard. There are many things that are extras in life that aren't necessarily bad, inherently bad. But if we don't use them, you know, if we don't utilize them or use them right, then they can become bad for us. So we want to make sure our athletes are focusing, keep their eyes in the front, staying on the objective, um, coming to practice, ready to roll every single day, making sure that they're hydrated, that their nutrition is right. Because ultimately at the highest levels, it is lifestyle versus lifestyle. And when you get two really good athletes, little things can make a big difference. And if an athlete's not quite there yet, doing the little things consistently over time makes them really good. Okay. And so it takes a lot of focus and it takes um, not just hoping you get there, but truly having a system to get there. Okay. And then the last thing here before I turn this over to Dan to talk about nutrition, we often talk to our athletes about what are your best thoughts before your best games? Okay. What are the thoughts that you should be thinking that allow you to walk out there and play your best games? What are the thoughts that you have before your worst games? Let's try to negate those and not have those and let's focus on the best thoughts. Okay. So some of the best thoughts that we go through with athletes are focusing on your technique instead of your opponent's moves. If you know that you're guarding somebody that has something they do that's really fancy or special, it's okay to know that, right? But for the most part, we're focusing on our techniques. That's something we can control. Treating all opponents the same, right? We don't underestimate people. We don't overestimate people. We're going to walk out there and play our hardest every single time. Again, we're not giving people too much respect. We're not, uh, and we respect them because they train hard, but we're not giving them too much respect. We're not worried about the other things that we can't control. All right. Um, going down on this because I don't want to do the whole thing, but as we scroll down right here, I don't care who's in front of me. Sometimes maybe, uh, you know, when I talk to athletes, I say, okay, what are some of the things that may get to you a little bit? And a lot of times it's looks, right? Like, oh man, you know, this guy is really muscular. This girl looks like she's really fast or, you know, they're aggressive. So a lot of times, and, and looks can be deceiving. Sometimes somebody looks like a great athlete and they're not. Sometimes they are. All right. But again, that's something that doesn't matter. So I don't care who's in front of me. I don't care if supposedly they're the best player in the world. They have to prove it today. So I'm going to walk out there and get after it and do my job. Okay. So a lot of athletes, they don't have the tool set to walk out there and have that mindset when they compete against somebody who's supposedly really good or maybe who is really good. So we got to train them to be able to do that. Okay. So those are just a few things that we like to go over. Um, not making, again, not making any game too big. If you are playing a local game at home or if you're playing in a state or national championship, the game's a game, a soccer field's a soccer field. You, As long as you go out and you give your best effort, that's all we can ask of an athlete. And they – they sometimes freeze up in those situations, though, if we're honest, right? So teaching them how to look at all games the same and how to walk out and to train and compete with consistent intensity. So, again, if you have any questions, uh, put it in the chat box and we'll get to those later. Now I'm going to turn it over to another really important area, which is talking about nutrition. Thank you, Chad. That was awesome. All right. So I like to think about athlete nutrition in terms of the athlete food pyramid where the most amount of our time and the most amount of effort we should put into our macros, making sure that we're getting the right amounts of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats in our diet to accomplish the goals we have. Then we need to make sure we're hitting all the micronutrients, so we're getting all the, pro all the vitamins, minerals, fiber, water in our diet. Next thing I like to look at is nutrition timing, making sure that I'm eating the right nutrients at the right time to get the most out of those foods. Then I like to incorporate sport foods. So sport foods are a relatively new category of foods, probably the last 10 to 15 years, things like protein bars, protein shakes, or other foods that have been specifically developed for athletes and to enhance performance. And finally, at the top of the food pyramid should be supplements. And supplements should only be used when necessary and to accomplish a specific goal. Okay, so let's talk about our macros. 
So proteins, remember that proteins are essential for muscle building and repair. Depending on the phase of your training you're in, it should be anywhere from 20 to 70% of your diet. And when I talk about phase of training, there are two different phases that we like to talk about. First is that long-term phase. Am I in the preseason, in-season, or postseason time for my sport? And what are the goals that I want to accomplish in each one of those times? The other time when you want to manipulate your nutrients is pre-game and post-game. So when you're getting ready for a game, you want to be increasing your carbohydrates so you have really good energy throughout the game, having less protein and less fat because those can weigh you down a little bit. So even though you may be in a different phase of training, sometimes you need to alter the percentage of your diet based on what you have coming up in the next day or the next couple of days. Remember that proteins come from both animals and plant sources. Insufficient protein can cause anemia, fatigue, stress fractures, and impaired muscle growth. So making sure you're getting at least enough protein in your diet on a regular basis is super important. Next, we like to talk about carbohydrates. And as a nutritionist, we like to talk about the darker carbohydrates, the less processed kinds of carbohydrates. So things that are darker in color, you know, usually the lighter color carbohydrates, things that are white, like sugar, don't last as long in your body and aren't as healthy for a lot of different reasons. So we like to think of carbohydrates in terms of the darker types of carbohydrates. They are your main source of energy. And again, they can be anywhere from 20 to 70% of your diet depending on what you're trying to accomplish with your diet during that time. The glucose or sugar molecules are stored in the liver and they're used for fuel, especially during physical activity. Carbohydrates improve your performance by delaying fatigue and allowing, allowing the athlete to compete at higher levels for longer periods of time. Anaerobic metabolism depends on having glucose in your body and having carbohydrates. So we want to have that anaerobic phase as long as possible. And they help with muscle gain because we're not going to have as much muscle breakdown if we have a good balanced diet with proteins and carbohydrates. And finally, fats. Fats are essential for sustained energy, proper digestion. A lot of athletes try to limit the amount of fat in their diet and they have problems with constipation and things like that. So having enough fat for digestion is important. Fats also play a key role in hormone production. So especially for male athletes, as well as female athletes, keeping their testosterone at a high enough level depends on having enough fat in their diet. Your diet can be anywhere from 10 to 40% of your diet. And as a general rule, as you increase protein, you increase fat as well. Even when you're eating leaner proteins, that's the major source of fat in your diet. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember, fats can be sourced from animals. Certain fruits like avocado and our legumes are beans, nuts, and seeds. Now, I like to include water as a macronutrient, and water is one of the things that I find is the most neglected substance for an athlete. And very often, when I can improve the hydration habits of my athletes, their performance goes to a whole different level. So make sure you emphasize with your athletes, or if you're an athlete, Think about how much you're drinking. Maybe for a day or two, record how many ounces of water you're actually drinking and see if that's the right amount for the goals that you have. Remember that water helps energize muscles. So when muscles don't have adequate fluids, they don't work as well and perform and can suffer. And what we mean by suffer is that that process of building muscle is dependent on impurities in your muscles getting cleaned out so your muscles can repair. So if you're not well enough hydrated, those impurities stay around your muscles too long and impede muscle growth. Improve skin appearance. So in all sports, whether it's soccer, football, baseball, whatever your sport may be, keeping the integrity of your skin, even when you have the potential for you know burns and rashes, things like that, is super important. So better hydration is going to help protect your skin. Make sure your kidneys are functioning properly, cleaning those impurities out of your bloodstream. So you need to have enough water to do that and it helps you concentrate. So often I get clients in my office who complain about headaches on a regular basis, especially in the afternoon. The most common cause of headaches in school, high school and college age athletes is dehydration. So by increasing the amount of water, making sure they're drinking water from the time they wake up throughout the entire day often eliminates headaches 
and improves concentration both in school and when they're competing on the field, practicing, learning better. And finally, maintains normal bowel function. Many of the clients I see in my office complain about irregular bowel trouble, constipation, things like that. And again, by improving their hydration, they're able to have more regular, consistent bowel movements. Nobody likes to play a sport when they're bloated, constipated, or uncomfortable because they haven't been able to go to the bathroom. As we move on to micronutrients, this chart kind of gives you a sense of all the micronutrients that should be considered in your body. And when we build a nutrition plan, we not only look at the proteins, carbs, and fats, the water, the fiber, but we look at all these micronutrients and make sure that they are accounted for in our plans. One of the most important micronutrients I like to talk about is iron, especially in running sport athletes. There's a condition called athletic anemia, which we often see in running athletes. And what that is, is that the capillaries on the bottom of your feet are very close to the surface. So the red blood cells can break very easily. And when those red blood cells break inside, you don't see anything on the outside of your foot. It causes low iron or anemia. Some of the symptoms that your athletes will feel, the most prominent ones tend to be things like fatigue. They might be short of breath. They're just, their tank just doesn't keep up the way other athletes or the way you think they should for the amount that they're training. And they can suffer muscle weakness. So they're just not as strong as, again, you think they should be given the way that they look. When you want to increase the iron in your diet or to make sure that you're getting enough iron in your diet, we make sure to include things like artichokes, egg yolks. So again, in our plans, we generally do not just do egg whites. We always do the whole egg. Some seafood is great, red meat. Again, if you, you know, many more athletes are choosing either vegan or vegetarian diet. So especially in those athletes where you're not going to be putting in any red meat, you need to make sure that the amount of dark green leafy vegetables, the amount of legumes and dried fruit is high enough to compensate for the lack of red meat. Because in an American diet, red meat is probably the single largest source of iron in their diet. Now, going back to what I was saying before about phases in training, we like to call this the soccer challenge. And we remind you that all sports are a marathon and not a sprint. So we're not just trying to be good for one game. We're trying to be great for a whole season. And then after one season, we're trying to improve during the off season to get ready for the next season. So part of that is making sure that you peak at the at during your competition period. When you're not in prime competition, when you're not in season, that you're making sure that you're taking all the right nutrients in to continue to grow and mature your body appropriately. And this whole concept is called nutrition periodization. And it's the idea of altering the diet, altering your the components of your diet, the amount of proteins, carbs, and fats with the goals of the particular part of your season. So possibly in preseason, your goal may be to lean down a little bit, increase your endurance, increase your speed on the field. Then once you get into in-season, what we do with most of our athletes is we want to maintain where they are. We don't want them gaining weight. We definitely don't want them losing weight. We want them to improve in their performance. And then in that postseason or off-season period, that's the time to focus on strength, getting stronger, faster, building that endurance. And altering those ratios of proteins, carbs, and fats will allow you to get the best out of your training cycle. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you'd like to make some changes to your meals, changes to your diet, where do you start? And the best place to start is with a body composition analysis. Because a body composition analysis is going to break down your weight for you. It's going to tell you not only what your weight is, but how much of your weight is body fat, how much is muscle, how much is water. And finally, what's your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, which means if you laid in bed for 24 hours and didn't do anything, how many calories your body needs to maintain your current weight? Now, you can do a body composition analysis by seeing a nutritionist like myself. Lots of gyms have these scales that can give you a good body composition analysis. There are also formulas you can download for free on the internet to do your own body composition analysis with, with a tape measure and with a scale and things like that. But the things we look at is what are the goals of our body fat percentage? Some people are too lean. Their body fat's too low, so their endurance is terrible. Some people's body fat's a little too high, and if we bring their body fat down a little bit, it's going to help increase their speed and performance. 
What about their muscle mass? How does their muscle mass set for their position in the sport? Do we need to increase muscle mass? Most of the time in school and uh, school, high school and college athletes, our goal should be to be increasing their muscle mass in a consistent way. And also altering nutrition to improve energy and endurance. So we know what we need to do. We knew what our, our goals are. What are, how do I actually change my diet? So we start off with calories. Calculate your basal metabolic rate. Add calories for daily living, whether that's going to school, working, whatever you do. And then add calories for the most for the amount of work that you do, whether that's playing soccer three or four days a week and lifting in the gym two days a week. There are lots of charts available on the internet to approximate how many calories your body needs to do those activities. Add that up. And that tells you what your total calorie need is to maintain your weight for 24 hours, given all your activity and everything you do. If you need to lose weight, and when I mean lose weight, lose body fat, you would decrease the number of calories you're eating per day. If you decrease your diet by 500 calories per day, you're going to lose one pound of fat per week. If you increase your calories by 500 calories, you're going to add 500 calories so your body's going to have 500 extra calories to build muscle and possibly add body fat, depending on how, where those calories come from. Then decide how your macronutrients should be. How much should be protein? How much should be carbohydrates? And how much should be fat based on what your goals are for this part of your season? Make sure that you're getting all your micronutrients in your diet, that you're eating a wide range of fruits, vegetables, and proteins covering all your micronutrients. I get a question a lot in my office, well, why can't I eat the same thing every day? And the answer is, is that all different foods have different amounts and different quantities of different nutrients. When you eat the same thing every day, most people end up deficient in some of the micronutrients. Make sure your water and hydrating properly. And then think about the timing of your foods. Do I want to eat a lot of protein right before practice? Probably not. But would I want to eat some carbohydrates? maybe a little bit of protein, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich before practice, that's a really good idea to help you perform at your best and be energized throughout your practice. This is an example of what the meal plans look like that we build at Champion Athletes. You don't have to do something as sophisticated as what we do for our clients, but the goals of your meal plan should be to meet those performance objectives. It's predictable. One of the things um, that I love that Mindset talks about a lot, that Chad and his colleagues talk about a lot, is controlling the things that you can control. And one of the things you can control is your diet. Nobody else controls it but you. And if you use a meal plan, your diet's going to be very predictable. You're either going to gain weight at a predictable rate or you're going to lose weight at a predictable rate. And you're going to perform better because of that predictability. It's going to make sure you have the macro and micronutrients, that your hydration's in there. The other thing a nutrition plan does is it reduces stress and anxiety. How many of you get home at the end of the day and say, what am I going to have for dinner? Then think about it for a while. Then you're not really sure. Did I get enough nutrients in for that meal? Maybe I ate too much. Maybe I ate too little. Same thing throughout the entire day. Well, what should I have for lunch? What should I have for breakfast? When you build a nutrition plan, it tells you what to have for breakfast, what to have for snacks, what to have for lunch and dinner. It takes that thought out of it. It's all pre-planned. Most of my clients take their meal plan prep their food on Sunday so it's ready to go for the whole week. Then when it's time for their meals, they grab it and go. So they're saving time and reducing wasted time, stress, and anxiety by having a predictable meal plan to follow. So at Champion Athletes, we help our clients through these three phases that I talked about. We begin with that body composition analysis as well as a detailed nutrition assessment. We build a customized meal plan for our clients to help them follow a plan, and then we coach them. So our clients text us their weight, let us know how they're feeling, how their energy is, and we make sure that they're reaching the goals of the plan that we established together. We follow that up by a reassessment, altering the plan, and continuing the coaching. So this is an ongoing process with our clients. Well, thank you, everyone. We'd like to open this up for questions now. So please feel free to ask any questions in the chat box for either Chad or myself. You can type them in the chat box, or you can text them to me at 845-641-3063. 
I was looking at where everybody's calling, coming into the um, conference from, and I'm really impressed with the number of people we have from California. We have a large number of athletes from California. So thank you for joining us today. So Mark Reeves has a question. Any ideas for quick release energy halftime for soccer games? So there are two options for that. You could consider something like a protein bar, something like that. Some of my clients will do two tablespoons of peanut butter and a squish of honey right underneath their tongue for a quick energy option. The other thing to ask yourself is should they be hydrating at the same time? So another option is to consider something of a liquid nature. So one option may be some of the pre-made protein shakes. Each client needs to test that separately. Some people's stomach doesn't do so well when they have kind of like a protein uh, during competition. So they need to test that. Anything that you eat in the middle of the game, I always tell people to try it at practice, kind of halfway through practice and see how you feel with it. So sometimes we like the liquid uh, protein shakes is a good example. There's also a, a drink called Treminio, which is a protein water that I like with a lot of my clients. It's like a fruit-based water with some protein in it. So they're getting hydration with some protein as well. So those are the things that I lean towards my clients as well. Um, ideal pregame snacks. Again, it kind of depends on timing, how early before, you know, is it right near meal time or is it closer to just uh, you're looking for a snack? So snacks wise, we like things like granola bars, peanut butter and jelly, or peanut butter and honey sandwiches are great things that are easy to digest. So we try to stay away from things that are harder to digest. So we don't really do like nuts and seeds pregame. Um, we don't do um, apples as an example because it's a fibrous fruit. So we tend to do things that are easier to digest. A banana's a great fruit. Oranges are great. You get a little burst of hydration and you get that vitamin C and some sugar through it. So orange slices are great um, as a pregame or in-game snack kind of thing. Those are things we lean towards. Chad, did you have anything to add? Any suggestions from your experience you'd like to add? No, those are pretty much the exact same things that we have our athletes um, have pregame as well. And then same thing for up there, the, the halftime. So. Any other questions we can answer for anyone? If you think of questions later on, feel free to reach out to us. Um, here's our contact information, both for Winning Mindset and for Champion Athletes. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. A recording of this will also be available on the Champion Athletes YouTube channel. So if you want to uh, play it for your team or for some other athletes, um, this will take us about a week to have up on uh, the channel, but then you would be able to view um, this same presentation on YouTube. Um, Elijah, our phone numbers are both listed here. These are uh, for Winning Mindset and for Champion Athletes. And a lot of people on are from California, but I saw that Tyler is somewhere in the KC area, somewhere around Kansas City. So <laughs> not too far from me, Tyler. I'm over in Spica. So there's a question here from Nathan. Is there any way for us to view this presentation after? Yes, it's going to be available on the Champion Athletes YouTube channel, and it'll be there in about a week. Or if you'd like the slides to share with your team, you can send me an email at info at champion-athletes.com, and I'll be happy to email you the slide set.
Awesome. Well, hey, Coach, thanks a lot for joining us. And if you're interested in arranging a private webinar just for your team, you can contact uh, Winning Mindset or you can contact me. And either of us is happy to do a private webinar just for your team athletes. Looks like there's someone typing one more question, so we'll just wait a second. Here we go. Uh, this is from Enrique Gomez. Do you suggest any specific time to eat any types of food? Because I've heard that once you eat past a specific time, that it's no longer good for your body. So as a general rule, it's a good idea to be finished eating about one to two hours before you're going to go to bed. The later you eat and the closer to going to bed, the more likely that food is going to be stored by your body and not burned. So if you're someone who's trying to lose weight, eating later closer to bedtime is going to be kind of counterproductive. It's going to be harder for you to lose weight because your body's going to want to store that food and store those calories that you're eating at night. All right, everyone, since there's no more questions, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Chad, you have some final thoughts? No, except for thank you for getting on. We appreciate it. And like Dan said, um, all of our information is on there. Reach out to us and we can do, uh, you know, privates, videos, video training with your athletes and then or yourself. Then we can also do some one-on-one work. Thanks, everyone. Have a great evening.